to you all and welcome to the show, if not now, when. I'm Marjorie Payon, Sébastien Badeau is with me in studio. Hello Marjorie. Hi Sébastien. So today we're going to talk about sustainability because it used to be a buzzword before 2020. But now it's a mandatory deadline to meet as soon as possible and it's even a driver that our economies can build on on the road to recovery. So how can we reignite digital sustainability? To dive in, we're joined today by the CEO of Digital for the Planet, Ines Leonardo Zi. Hello. Hello, Ines. Great to have you on set. So if out of the blue, I give you <laughs> this figure and let you do the mass, 53.6 million metric tons, what comes in mind? I'm not sure, but I will say why landfill in Africa for e-waste. Well, actually, it's definitely the record that was set for the amount of e-waste ever globally in 2019 and it's set to double by 2030. So how can we make a difference? Actually, we usually think that uh, digital pollution is about our selfies on Instagram, but actually I prefer a person who posts every day a selfie of himself, uh, rather than buying a new computer every year, because this is the most polluting uh, thing in terms of digital pollution. 75% of digital pollution is about manufacturing devices. So, um, yeah, and Europe is champion to send, uh, before um, before United States to send his uh, e-waste in um, countries in development. So this is an issue because technically Convention of Bâle is, uh, for, is not allowing uh, this kind of um, shipment in Africa. Uh, we are not uh, allowed to send uh, West in developed country, but indeed we are not sending them as West, but as second hand material. So there is a big difference. The but they're not reused. Are they are not reused actually, no, mm. they are just destroyed mm. and we take the gold and the silver mm. and the copper uh, to, to, to re-employ in actually cheap jewelry. Mm. So, so you've been you know closely everything. analyzing the question of digital pollution over the past four years and you do define three different layers yeah. of, of digital pollution, which are they? You have environmental digital pollution, which I studied, and be, but before me, some people did it, uh, and it was very interesting to dig digger. And then I finally um, understood that uh, you have to expand the theory to intellectual digital pollution, but also societal digital pollution. And intellectual digital pollution is the way that disembodied digital impacts our cognitive capabilities, such as um, uh, the way we sleep, the way we think, um, the way we interact with people, but also electronism, which is um, illiterism, um, the way that you can't use technology. You have all these um, factors that you can find in intellectual digital pollution. And then you have societal digital pollution, which is how um, this imparted digital can impact our project of society, the way we, the vivre ensemble uh, that we care about. And um, we see all that when you study those three um, different topic mm. of digital pollution. And they are linked, right? You cannot fight one without fighting the other? Yes, correct. It is linked. Actually, this is interdependent. You just can't um, um, take them in silo and think that uh, you can solve a, a each um, component uh, separately. For example, if you don't have the intellectual capability to understand what happened in terms of environment, digital pollution, mm. it's complicated to find the solution to solve the problem. But you don't have the why we do this. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't care about the environment. So this is why it's important to, to, to work on those three topics and simultaneously. Interconnected the topic, they yeah. are definitely, and you'll see that interconnection is also key here on this set, since we do have a fighter when it comes to climate change, and we do have one of the big tech at the table. <laughs> Actually, Sebastian, can we make compatible eco-efficiency and technology? Can can they work together, and in hand? I think. On top of working together, I think what's really important is the responsibility that companies have. And I think that in China, companies really feel uh, that they owe something to their users and to the people that they work with, be it by creating jobs, be it by making their life easier as well. So I think that's like really ingrained in the way that like we go uh, about doing things. And I see that like every day. We, we've done a lot of things like the Ant uh, Forest Project, replanting 120 million trees, because we know that every time that we're doing digital payments, that actually has a negative impact on the environment. So we want to make up for that. Uh, we also have created uh, uh, spaces where people could uh, discard or reuse the packages that they use during 11-11, 
because we know that there's a huge, we benefit from that, but we need to like play a role in making sure that this is recycled. But uh, outside of all of that, I think what's really important is that we're seeing people because that's where what happens really is like people, if you give them the tools, if you give them access to that technology, they're gonna use it for good. So we just wanna facilitate, I think that's our role, to facilitate, give the tools, and then let people really do good. And above the mindset, there's also this idea that, I mean, you have to be, or any big tech or any platform in, in, in the market has to be accountable for what they're actually doing to the environment, even in terms of a very interesting initiative to uh, fight climate change. From your perspective, Ines, how can we uh, make them accountable? It's important to understand that you have to inform people of what we do with technology. And we give digital to people like a tool that you can um, test every day without knowing how it's done in the kitchen. You don't have any information on what's in the backstage. Mm -hmm. So we have to give this information to people to understand better the deal of digital pollution, the, the, the deal of digital impact on the society. And then I'm sure I'm quite confident that people will find the, the true question to ask mm -hmm. and, and then the, 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 the good solution to develop. We launched a platform in China called Idlefish, which mm -hmm. is basically kind of like Le Bon Coin, yeah. like C2C platform. And we created a way for people to use the clothes that they had already bought and recycle them. So it was very simple, like, you know, you click two things on your app and then somebody comes and picks up from your house, it's very easy. And as soon as we put that in place, we saw a huge uptick. So again, if you give people the potential to recycle in an easy way, they will do it. But it's our job to make it so that, you know, you create the network, uh, the infrastructure, the supply chain. So we definitely have responsibility, accountability, transparency, but there's also this idea that sustainability can rhyme with profitability. Mm. It, it has to, actually, we are living in a in a society of capitalism and if you have to live good, if you have to have a nice life with your kids and give them a nice future, you need money. Of course, so if you have to develop your activity in the digital, you have to be profitable. But this is not the point, actually. We have the habitude to oppose profitability and, 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 and the good and the common good. But this is a wrong, this is a mistake, actually, because finally you find the people who want the good poorer and poorer, and you think that the people who become richer and richer are bad. But this is a simplicism. And you can just um, reduce the definition of that like this. So we have to, to consider how to make money, and this is okay and completely fine with this uh, for everyone, but the planet doesn't have to be a content for what we do. And we have to pay when we use the natural resources of the planet. How can we take better action to make a change? Like I said, um, we can eco-conceive our, our software, our hardware too. We can inform younger people, but also the oldest. We have to build a project about what is progress, because everyone is talking about progress, right? But we don't know really what it is, and maybe this is different for you than for me and for you. So maybe just l gathering each other and uh, together and understand what we want as a progress because today digital is not likely to serve people but this is the humans mm -hmm. who tend to serve digital which is the wrong idea of progress according mm -hmm. to me. We need what to have a common view also, a common project to go towards. I'm sure, yeah ex exactly, I'm mm -hmm. sure we will disagree on some points, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. but this is the beginning of understanding each other. Mm -hmm. So what is progress if we do not progress actually? So mm -hmm. I think the first step is to build a common project. Mm -hmm. And I think we can agree on the fact that, I mean, this, this time, this COVID times, has changed everything Absolutely. for ourselves. The best yeah, and, I, and that's one of the last questions we wanted to, to, to ask you, Ines, is, you know, you've talked to us about what you see by studying the, the, the market, the environment, and, and everything that's changing there. What is your personal takeaway from the time that we just went through? What are you going to be doing? What are you already doing different today that you were doing six months ago? Personally, today I take my time. Mm. I was running after something I thought it was my well-being, but actually it was just the image I thought people were expecting from me. So I definitely realized that nobody is expecting nothing from me, just myself. And uh, myself, I just expecting to be uh, a better human being, but also a better mother because I became a mother this year. Congratulations. So, thanks. So, so now we're just taking my time and enjoying the simple moments. That's beautiful.
Thank you very much to the two of you. Thank you so much, Ina. Thank you Thank so you. much, Thank Sebastian. You so much. Thank you. Thanks to you for watching. We'll be back soon with another episode of If Not Now, When? <laughs>